Gold Star families in a fight for love and their future. According to a little known federal law, widows and widowers will lose their military survivors' benefits if they remarry before the age of 55. In the post 9-11 era, one national nonprofit says Gold Star spouses, on average, are only in their mid-20s or early 30s, and surviving military spouses only remarry in 5% of cases, citing financial concerns and losing benefits. Reporter Heather Graff takes an in-depth look at a push to change what some consider an unfulfilled promise from our government. They were coming back from a mission. Uh, he was riding an ATV. He hit a pressure plate improvised explosive device. And he was about 10 minutes out from, um, from the hospital in Ghazni. The doctors told us that he had opened up his eyes really big. And he said, wife, kids, I love. And then went into cardiac arrest. It was spring of 2013 when U.S. Army Staff Sergeant Michael Simpson was killed in Afghanistan. I mean, how could I have been 35 with a three and a one year old and my husband was gone? And as Krista mourned her husband in the immediate aftermath of his death, she recalls feeling both sorrow and stress. I'm a stay at home mom. How am I going to care for my children? How am I going to keep this roof over there? their heads and I got very nervous. That's why the benefit she'd soon receive as a surviving military spouse would prove to be crucial. Those benefits allowed me to, to stay with home with my children. I didn't have to put them in daycare. I didn't have to go to work. I could allow our family to just um, take one step at a time. So Krista and her sons did exactly that for several years. So Mike and Gus were teammates. I didn't know him when they deployed. Until a friendship with Army Master Sergeant Gus Anderson became something more. I started to realize how well he cared for me and the boys. When did you know you wanted to marry him? He's invested in, in remembering and honoring Mike. And I thought to myself, who else could I possibly spend my life with? It was only then that Krista says the issue of surviving spouse benefits began to resurface. It was when I declared that Gus and I were going to get married that many people came to me and said, I don't know if you should do this. You're going to lose your benefits, everything. So the current law means that a surviving spouse who remarries before the age of 55 loses all of their benefits. They lose their money from the VA, DOD, health insurance, education benefits, access to VA home loans, right to be buried with their late spouse, all of it. Ashlyn haycock Lohman is the Deputy Director for Government and Legislative Affairs at the National Military Nonprofit known as TAPS, or the Tragedy Assistance Program for Survivors. And she feels it's past time for that age restriction to be lifted. They have to wait until they're 55 which makes zero sense. It's very, very archaic. Based on numbers from the Department of Veterans Affairs, TAPS estimates there are about 65,000 surviving spouses under the age of 55 who currently receive benefits. And less than 5% of surviving spouses in that age range have remarried. It says that most surviving spouses are not in the financial situation to be able to give up those benefits. What ends up happening is surviving spouses choose not to legally remarry. And that's not just a theory. For Gold Star Widow Elizabeth Davis, it is a difficult reality. This shouldn't be a financial choice. It should just be a matter of honoring a legacy for a life lost in duty to country. Her husband, U.S. Marine First Lieutenant Matthew Davis, was killed in 2014, leaving behind Elizabeth and their six-year-old daughter. You learn to work through it but it doesn't ever really go away. A loss that lingers, even as she eventually let love back into her life. I met my fiance through another military widow. Elizabeth and Marine Master Sergeant John Lewis have now been engaged for years. They're also living together. I love that Have a son together and are raising him alongside Elizabeth and Matthews, now 15 year old. But Elizabeth and John have decided not to get married. A thumbs up, SEAL team. At least not yet. 
because if they did, her surviving spouse benefits would be terminated. It feels like um, like a punishment for for being happy. You'll wait till you're 55. Correct. It's a long way to go. It is. I'm not even 40. In that decades-long wait is why the team at TAPS has been calling attention to this issue among lawmakers on Capitol Hill. People are always shocked when I explain this penalty to them. Ashlyn also explains to them her research, saying the policy dates back to the Vietnam era and updating it would likely cost about $2 billion over 10 years. In the grand scheme of things, $2 billion, which sounds like a lot of money, is actually not that much in the federal budget. In April, Democratic Senator Raphael Warnock and Republican Senator Jerry Moran co-introduced bipartisan legislation they're calling the Love Lives On Act. It would allow spouses of deceased service members to retain survivor benefits if they remarry, no matter their age. We deserve to see this change. The military as a whole deserves to be supported. As for Krista. So we had on the altar, we had a picture of Mike with a candle and the flag behind it. In the end, she and Gus chose to go through with I do. There was a lot of financial consequences to our marriage. Losing her survivor benefits, but adding to her family. We're a living family of four, but really a family of five. It's interesting being in the cemetery and watching your husband also grieve over your late husband. And hoping to send a message that love really does live on. I live this life and I am determined to show my children what a beautiful life it can be because that's what Mike died for. What would that mean to you to see the law changed? It would be the action behind their words that we will never forget and we will always be here for you. We will always take care of you. We also reached out to the Department of Veterans Affairs. They referred us to a lengthy statement they gave to the Senate's Committee on Veterans Affairs, where they suggested a few tweaks to the Love Lives On Act language. They also wrote that the VA supports removing the remarriage restriction requirements for surviving spouses. The VA did note that support is subject to the availability of appropriations. In other words, they need funding.